In this video, we're going to talk about the different layers of the eye. These layers in the eye are called tunics. A tunic is like a loose garment, a piece of clothing. There's going to be three predominant tunics or layers of the eye that we're going to talk about. The fibrous tunic, the vascular tunic, and the sensory tunic. Starting from superficial to deep, we're going to go with the fibrous tunic. Just like its name implies, fibrous tunic is made up of dense fibrous connective tissue. There are layers of some of the tunics that have epithelial tissue, but those are some minor exceptions. The fibrous tunic includes two main structures, the clear outer cornea of the eye, which helps bring light into the eye and refract it to help focus it on the back of the eye, and then also the white of the eye, which is called the sclera. The cornea is clear, the sclera is white. The word sclera actually is from a root word that means hard. And when you see in the dissection in class, when we try to cut into the sclera, it will be hard. The cornea is one of the unique tissues in our body because it can actually be transplanted from one person to the next because it does not have a lot of vascular tissue or it lacks blood vessels. This is an image of the cornea right, from a sheep eye that's been preserved. The cornea in this case clouds over because of the protein denature and it scatters light. This is the white or hard portion of the eye, which is the sclera. Doesn't look quite the same as it does in a real sample. The second layer is called the vascular tunic. Vascular, think vessels, blood vessels. The main job of this structure is to provide nourishment for other layers of the eye. The vascular tunic is made up of a layer called the choroid, which is a membrane-like layer that provides nutrients to the eye and helps absorb some light. In the sheep eye and in some animal eyes, the choroid layer is also known as the tapetum lucidum, which means bright tapestry. This is what is responsible for eye shine in some animals at night. In nocturnal animals, it helps absorb more light and keep that light internally, uh, kind of like having a bunch of mirrors in a room with one light bulb. The vascular tunic is also uh, comprised of a layer called the ciliary bodies. The ciliary bodies are tiny little hairs that actually form a ring around the lens of the eye. So think about the equator of the earth and the ciliary bodies kind of attached to the lens of the eye in a similar fashion. These are responsible for changing the shape of the lens to help us focus on different objects. Here's an example from the sheep dissection. Right? These are the ciliary bodies. This is where the lens would normally be located. In other structures, we're looking at the back of the iris here. Here is the clear cornea. And these are some other structures that we'll be mentioning shortly. Here's part of the choroid layer. And this is the bright tapestry, the tapetum lucidum, showing eye shine in nocturnal animals. The iris is the colored part of your eye, and the main job of the iris is to control the amount of light entering the eye. It acts like a diaphragm. Okay, this is the shades on a window. Okay, think of your house. You can use the shades to control how much light enters the window. Uh, you don't use the window itself. The window in our eye is called the pupil, which is really not a structure at all. It's just a void. It's the part of our eye where light enters and does not come out. That's why it appears as a black hole. We often talk about our pupil dilating or constricting, but really it's the movement of the iris muscles that control the opening and closing of our pupil. Iris is the shades, pupil is the window. The last layer of our eye is the sensory turn tunic, which consists of the nerve receptors that are responsible for taking light energy and converting it into an action potential. There's two parts of the sensory tunic. tunic. One is the pigmented layer, which helps absorb light, and it's right adjacent to the choroid layer. And then the next layer is the neural layer, which contains the very important rods and cones, or nerve sensory receptors that are responsible for taking light and again, converting it to an action potential. 
Rods are nerve receptors that function in dim light situations. This is kind of a, if you're walking around in your house in the middle of the night and there's maybe just small light coming in from uh, a reflection of the moon. Cones allow you to function or see better in bright light and CO cones help us detect CO color. These are actual nerve receptors. Here's the pigmented layer of the sensory layer. And these are actually the layer of nerve cells, rods, and cones. This outer portion of the retina is kind of unique because light literally passes over the cells, past them, and it's not until it gets to the posterior aspect of the retina that it innervates the dendritic endings of the rods and cones and then an action potential moves towards the front of the eye along neural pathways until it goes down to the optic nerve and ultimately to the visual cortex of our brain and we interpret that action potential as vision. In the sheep eye here, the three layers, one, the fibrous tunic includes the sclera, which is this very thin outer white portion of the eye. It's very hard. Cornea is also part of that layer. The second layer you can see is this dark band is the choroid layer, part of the vascular tunic. And the last layer includes the retina, which is this thin yellowish brown film, which is part of the sensory tunic. So the three tunics, fibrous, includes sclera and cornea, vascular, includes the choroid, and sensory, which includes the retina.